Hi, Jonathan. Thank you so much for joining us today for today's interview. So just to start off, there's so much innovation that's happening in the petrochemical sector. Before we dig into your outlook on the sector and what's on the horizon, could you please tell us how you got involved in the industry and your current role at Barouge? First of all, thank you, Natalie, for inviting me for the discussion. So basically, I'm Brazilian. I have been in the industry since my graduation. Different roles in different countries. Obviously, started my career in Brazil. Spent some time then in uh, Europe. I joined Borealis. That's one of the owners of Baruch. Uh, and I will talk a little bit about Baruch in a second. But basically, Borealis is one of the owners of Baruch. And then in 2014, I joined Baruch in Middle East. Then I moved to Singapore. Currently, I'm responsible for the Asia South region. So everything associated with sales, marketing, and supply chain activities, starting from India until Australia, New Zealand, obviously passing to all the countries in Southeast Asia. Baruj is one of the largest petrochemical companies in the world. We are with the major manufacturing facilities based in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. The head office of sales and marketing activities though are in Singapore. We operate basically from all the Middle East until Asia Pacific, focus on advanced uh, polyethylene solutions, healthcare, energy infrastructure businesses, and packaging businesses, and also mobility. That's basically what we do. So now that you've told us a little bit about who you are and what you do, could you tell us what's your outlook on petrochemicals going forward? What do you think is the main driver influencing change across the future of the industry? And what do you think the shape of post-pandemic recovery is going to look like? No, I think a couple of major changes, right? So on a macroeconomical level, first, petrochemicals demand is still set to grow. The drivers associated with petrochemical demand, and especially now I'm talking about Baruch products that are basically polyolefins, are still there. They are associated with uh, population growth. They are associated with urbanization. They are associated with better standards of life across regions, right? So that uh, demand, obviously, is it still set to grow. And what we have seen through the pandemic is not necessarily a deceleration of their growth. In some countries, yes, in some momentum, given the, the pandemic in itself, but the growth still remains and the, the industry remains very, very strong. So again, fundamentals associated with petrochemical demand is still expected to be very much in place despite the situation we are living right now. I think a second major trend that we have seen before pandemic and actually is also happening right now is associated with the stream integration, right? So now I'm talking with you that has a lot to do with the connections between refining and petrochemicals, and that connections are set to be further strengthened, I would say, from an industry point of view. We also see major players into the oil and gas industry that have obviously looking to petrochemicals on different eyes recently. And that situation is expected to maintain. In our case, again, we have a very large integration opportunities within the facilities that we have in, in Abu Dhabi. And obviously that's a uh, uh, key advantage of Baruj and many other petrochemical players in this industry. I think the third one that I would like to highlight is obvious, obviously circularity. So all the players are looking into sustainability as one of the key aspects. And in, in the case of specifically polyolefins, we are talking about circularity, right? So we are talking about closing the loop and utilize again the plastic resources as actually resources rather than waste. That fundamental shift is extremely clear. Borouge is extremely committed to that. And again, talking with you uh, on, on the integration between refinery and petrochemicals, uh, that becomes even more important, right? So we obviously see mechanical recycling as one of the key possibilities. There are many things that need to be done to allow that to happen. But obviously, there are many players uh, looking into chemical recycling that also requires further integration with refineries uh, to allow that to be cost effective and allow that to happen. Thank you very much for answering that question. Moving on. 2020 was a turning point for the chemical industry with more companies than ever evolving the business strategy to ensure they're contributing to reducing the global waste problem and driving a circular economy through improved technologies and practices. For downstream businesses, do you think adopting a circular economy is going to be a practical business model? Yeah, I think it goes beyond being practical. I think it's necessary, right? So fundamentally speaking, it is, circularity is something we need all to participate on and making sure that this energy transition actually takes place in many senses. 
Now, the question that I think every player are trying to answer in this industry is how exactly do they want to play and how to elaborate the different business models associated with that circularity. Again, moving back specifically to, to what we do, right? There are many challenges associated with recycling polyethylene solutions. And they are associated in, in many cases with the fact that many different layers of polyethylene solutions together with other materials are actually packed together. When you buy, just as an example, a potato chip, you will normally see one package, but in reality, each one of that bags are sometimes composed of eight, 10 layers of different materials that are put together. And obviously, that is very challenging to recycle, right? What the industry is evolving towards is what we call monomaterial solutions that are highly recyclable. Yeah, and we are very proud to the solutions that we have right now to enable that transition to happen. One of the key uh, challenges that the industry have been facing before, for example, toothpaste tubes. Yeah, toothpaste tubes are, again, normally made from more than one specific material. And obviously, all of us use toothpaste tubes in our day-to-day -day life. So how do we enable that transition to happen is by finding solutions where monomaterials are actually utilized. I think that's very interesting insight. Thank you very much for sharing with us.